Hola. Hola, what's up, everybody? Welcome back. It's been a long day for me. But I'm back home now. We did have a morning stream, by the way, if you missed it, about this mother that shot her daughter and was sentenced. And I uh, just got back home now. There's been a lot of craziness going on today. Um, Right now, we're... We're going to, sorry, I'm distracted. Right now we're going to do, um, there's a major, major update on this case about the woman that was kidnapped or, yeah, carjack kidnap in Florida. Um, we covered the original story on this channel and then we did a second update on a second channel. I think a lot of people missed it and it was, the details are nuts. And now today I was hit up and they told me there's another update. Another update. It's a really crazy story. A cop was arrested. This woman was kidnapped and killed. A lot of things are sus and weird. Your about information the story. is being sold oh, no. by data brokers. All Sorry. The oh, <laughs> I didn't mean that for now. So we're going to watch this press conference. And after this live stream, after going through the details, the second live stream we're going to do is about this guy that lit himself on fire today. All right. In New York, outside of like the Trump trial. There's video of it. I mean, there was a bunch of people outside. People were live streaming. This guy, I, I don't know, I guess he put gas or some type of accelerant on himself and lights himself up. And I'm pretty sure I heard screams. It's all on video. Ah, ah! Burned himself, lit up on fire. At some point, I think somebody did a fire extinguisher on him or something. And um, cops are kind of slow to respond, but they um, they extinguished him, and he looked pretty, I don't know. He was still moving. They threw him on a stretcher and uh, whisked him away. So he, he, he has a long... So we're going to get into that anyway on the second stream on Ikid Mel CC, the second channel. It was nuts. It was nuts. Insane. And there's a press conference actually that dropped, so we're going to watch that too on the next stream. So let's start with this one first. This came out today, right? Three hours ago, yeah. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll see. I'll leave it for the second stream because I had some thoughts. Okay. Too, but uh, I'll, thank I'll you so one. much for being here. Uh, this will be the third update uh, that we're providing on the Catherine Aguas Vivas uh, murder case, uh, kidnapping case. And, uh, you know, what's incredibly important is that we continue to advise the public as timely as we can as this case evolves. Uh, over the past week, many of the experts that the news uh, channels have brought in to talk about complicated and sophisticated cases like this have been absolutely correct. Over the past week, our detectives have been uh, working with our judiciary, subpoenaing records from phones, uh, other pieces of evidence, video evidence from crime scenes, and we're still waiting for a lot of that information to come back. We knew that initially uh, Catherine had uh, been traveling north from Homestead I think the initial report that we had relayed to you that her husband, Miguel, had uh, provided information to our detectives initially that she was coming up to visit family members. Uh, we said at the time we did not know of any family members that were located in the area. We've since located at least two family members, but neither one of them were expecting a visit mm. from Catherine at the time. When she was on her way traveling up here, probably around 4 p.m. in the afternoon, when she was probably in the area of downtown Orlando on I-4, there was a likely a communication, a phone call, that occurred through a FaceTime communication. We had reported that uh, the husband, Miguel, had provided his phone and was cooperative, but we thought that there was a lot of details that he was leaving out, is what I said at the last news conference. Uh, her brother, uh, Lewis, has also been uh, providing information and also gave his telephone up uh, voluntarily for forensic examination and actually 
was conducting, by his words, his own independent investigation. Uh, he did not contact law enforcement to do that, but he reached out from a computer that was connected to an iPhone through an iCloud account and found a contact that looked like it was the last person that, that Catherine had spoken with. And then, by his report, he called that person and he said he did not know who that person was. He screenshotted an image of the person that he called. Uh, we, have, we have later identified that person. I'm going to call him Giovanni for now. For, for, uh, there's going to be a lot of names here, but I'm going to call him Giovanni. We'll release his full name at the conclusion of this press conference. Uh, he takes a still photo, does not know who the person is, and sends it to our detectives. The forensic examination of his phone shows a greater picture of not only the person that he sent us the photograph of, but he was actually in FaceTime. So it's a FaceTime photograph of Lewis talking with this person who we now know to be Giovanni. Uh, we identify Giovanni by taking the photograph that is contained in the image that is released, running it through a database called FACES that's run in Pinellas County by the Pinellas County Sheriff's Office, and it matches with 98.6% mm. a 2019 arrest in Orange County, a booking Ooh. image that identifies the person as Giovanni. Giovanni and, and his girlfriend will, will use her last name for this as Soto, they reside in Castleberry. As detectives are awaiting a lot of the investigative reports to come back on the phone tolls, photographs, uh, 417 cameras, all of these things, we ultimately, through surveillance, establish probable cause to conduct a search warrant of the home in Castleberry where Giovanni and his girlfriend Soto live. We conduct uh, the search warrant after Giovanni and Soto leave the residence. We go inside and ultimately uh, find fentanyl, a, wow. a gun, the gun yeah. not a 10 millimeter and likely not related to this particular crime. And ultimately, Giovanni is facing charges for that. While we're conducting the search warrant, uh -huh. We get contacted by our federal partners at HSI that, that Soto, the girlfriend of Giovanni, and an occupant of the house in Castleberry that we're executing a search warrant on, takes and accepts delivery of three kilos of cocaine after it was mailed in through the mail. United States Postal Service intercepted that. A delivery was made in Osceola County. Yo, they sent three kilos through the mail? <laughs> what? Cocaine, after it was mailed in through the mail, United States Postal Service intercepted that. A delivery was made in Osceola County, where Soto collects that delivery. She is arrested, facing federal charges, and currently incarcerated in Osceola County under a federal hold looking at that. Giovanni is facing Seminole County charges of trafficking fentanyl, uh, and then we will release specific details and ask for the public's assistance to help us locate him. We've got his photo. We're going to put a photo up on the screen later uh, in this news conference. Going back to the vehicle, I said that the green Acura was incredibly unique. There were three in the state. Uh, two were salvaged. There was only one that was out there, but there was no license plate on the Acura. Uh, in a previous news conference, I said it was legitimately owned by a family in Cassaberry. They sold it to a dealership or traded it at a dealership. It went to an auto auction and then ultimately ended up in a buy here, pay here that does a lot of their marketing and sales on Facebook Marketplace. Mm -hmm. When they post that on Facebook Marketplace, a person with a profile name of Jordan Latroy reaches out, uh, does not speak English, and then ultimately shows up at the car dealership to purchase that green Acura. The profile photograph on the Facebook 
profile that's used to communicate with the buy here, pay here dealership. Uh, we'll put an image up on the screen here of that profile picture. Uh, back one slide. And you can see Ooh. it appears that the profile picture. Okay. I'm a little lost and confused and I've been following the story. The last time I did this press conference, they went through the whole timeline. And so it was a little confusing, but we ended up understanding this one kind of a little, but kind of coming to. Um, so this is, is he, he's saying he's the actual person that made the purchase of the Acura. Previous news conference, I said it was legitimately owned by a family in Castleberry. They sold it to a dealership or traded right. it at a dealership. a dealership. It went to an auto auction and then ultimately ended up in a buy here, pay here that does a lot of their marketing and sales on Facebook Marketplace. Mm. When they post that on Facebook Marketplace, a person with a profile name of Jordan Latroy reaches out, uh, does not speak English, and then ultimately shows up at the car dealership to purchase that green Acura. Mm. The profile photograph on the Facebook profile that's used to communicate with the buy here, pay here dealership, uh, we'll put an image up on the screen here of that profile picture. Uh, back one slide. And you uh. can see it appears that the profile picture taken no. in January is somebody wearing exactly the same clothes. Hell nah. This guy in his Facebook profile picture has the same outfit that he did on to kidnap and kill this lady? Hell nah. What? He wore the same outfit? Oh, damn it. Sorry. Wait for three seconds. Man, he wore the same outfit. Oh, I can't with these people. I mean, good for the case, of course, but wow. Ski mask, everything. Same shirt, same pants, everything. So for those that don't know, yeah, he kidnapped this lady. It was really weird um, because this lady was driving up North Florida and the family had no idea she was coming up there. The husband said that she was going up there to see family, but they didn't know she was coming or right? knew anything about it. And she said this car is following her, this green Acura, and it starts ramming her it's like the back of the car. Husband's like, don't stop the vehicle. And she ends up getting caught at a red light. They never call the cops, which is suspicious. Even the cops thought it was sus that like if she couldn't call, then why wouldn't he call or call on three way or whatever? But this pedestrian caught this incident. And so later on, the cars, she's found dead and the cars found burnt. And the cops call the husband and the husband's like, OK, I'll come up there. I'll come up to up North Florida. And the husband brings the woman's brother along, the victim's brother. They start driving up there. While they're driving up there, they call a childhood friend that's married to a cop. This cop then calls the police department and lies about who he is, gives a fake name or a false identity. And he starts collecting information, asking about the case and what's going on. Then he goes on to forward the information to the husband or the brother, which they thought was sus. The cop gets caught and he gets arrested. I wonder if I have a picture of the guy. Uh, I downloaded the picture the other day. I had the link here. I had it, but of course it's gone. Uh, let me just do it here again. Uh, it, it's it's a really like weird, twisted, winding story, and it only twisted and winded more today with other people that I haven't even heard of. I'm like, what the f? And it even and even before, even before this woman was kidnapped. Right, we're going back again. The day before, the day before she's kidnapped. 
One day before the carjacking, a tow truck driver was gunned down on Taft neighborhood in Orange County. That tow truck driver is the tow truck truck driver that towed that green Acura. This guy was gunned down with like a hundred bullets, so that they and it's ten millimeter, I think, so they think it's related to somehow related to this lady. Um, over a hundred rounds. A good number of those rounds being 10 millimeter bullets. Then the next day, this whole thing happens. So, I guess they were able to track it back and find this guy's Facebook. I, I guess they used the image software and they were able to track this guy down. I guess that's how they did it. Or what appears to be. I mean, he also made the purchase. Exactly the same clothes as our shooter. Oh. A backtrack of a. A phone number that is given with the purchase of the green Acura and I remember I, I had said in the previous news conference that the purchaser never came back to finalize the deal is why there was no tag ever registered to the vehicle a phone number that was used in that communication links back through an Orange County Sheriff's Office burglary report of somebody uh, with the name of uh, Jordanish Torres Garcia. We'll put his photograph up up there. Um, Jordanish Torres Garcia. Well, who the hell is this now? Again, the name used in that profile is Jordan Latroy. The mm. phone that that the phone number that he uses links back to his legitimate legal name, or Jordanish oh, Torres Garcia, or as he goes by Jordan, 28 years old. He had an active felony warrant for weapons possession. And with the assistance of the U.S. Marshals, the Orange County Sheriff's Office, and the Seminole County Sheriff's Office, we now have him in custody here at the Sheriff's Office. We arrested him uh, in Orange County as he was walking in to a business on Orange Avenue south of... of um, um, I think it's Oak Ridge, a couple miles south of Oak Ridge. And this photograph is a photograph that was taken at the time of the arrest just after noon today. Again, he is here at our office uh, being interviewed for his connection in this crime. Now, back to the comparison of photographs, please. We can go back to that. I'm identifying him as a person of interest mm. because when it comes to legal cases, that's probably the safest thing to call him. Mm. But his phone number is matching the phone number that was given with the person who purchased the green Acura. Yeah. The profile that is connected to him, the image on the right or, or in front of what looks like a location, a tourist location in Orlando, is the profile image that he has had up there since January. And then of course the photograph of the crime scene of what he's wearing looks to me like a den of uh, like the only thing I'd say that the shirt looks similar, but almost the design almost looks a little different on the front, but or maybe, maybe it's not. I don't know. It looks a little more. I don't know. It's identical, right? So I don't know how uh, strong you can emphasize a person of interest. He's not going to be released. Uh, he has uh, federal, uh, charges that he's going to be held on, and this investigation will continue. All of this is without yet uh, getting the tolls uh, and the records that we have subpoenaed uh, out there. Uh, we still don't know yet uh, who the other occupant in the green Acura is. Uh, we'll mm -hmm. continue to work uh, that ang angle of the investigation, but again, this is uh, great police work, uh, great investigative follow-up, a collaboration between uh, the FBI, the DEA, the Orange County Sheriff's Office, the Osceola County Sheriff's Office, HSI, uh, and our media partners who have been doing an outstanding job keeping this on the forefront of everyone's attention, uh, front and center of what's going on. Uh, the, the communication that Lewis has provided us was less than forthcoming. Still, Lewis and Miguel Miguel being the husband, Lewis being the brother, are not suspects. We're not charging them at this time. 
But there again, Lewis's communication with us was that he talked to this person on the phone, which we now know to be Giovanni. He tells us, Lewis tells us, that Giovanni says that Catherine was up here to deliver money and other stuff. Wow. Wow. There you have it. Wow. Boom. There you have it. Drugs, probably drugs or guns or whatever, probably drugs. And wow, wow, that's, that's just crazy. What kind of a husband has the woman doing this kind of work too? What the hell? For a friend. Now, Family business? now again, I'm not going to speculate, but he says to us, she was up here to deliver money and other stuff for a friend. And again, uh, person of interest, Jordan Torres Garcia is in custody here at the sheriff's office, uh, will, is being interviewed right now by detectives. The other person of interest we're looking for is, is Giovanni. We'll lease, release Giovanni's full information and we will have media packets that kind of summarize Shit. as much as, as we can. This guy's wanted. Uh, again, incredibly complicated investigation that has twists and turns. Well, just look evil and shit. What's over him? <laughs> but in, in just about a week, I think that there's great uh, progress in this investigation without getting a lot of the court documents and records back yet. When those records come back, I think it's going to be able to put a lot of the pieces of the puzzle that are still outstanding uh, together. Yeah, I think so, too. Got the memo. The fact that a cop was involved in this, I almost wonder, yeah, if it's, it's like bigger or something, you know, like just super sus that these people are calling a cop. A cop is lying to the police department to funnel information back. Legendary CEO, thank you for the 12 months. Zebra Girl, thank you for the membership. Miss Mojo Ryzen, thank you for the 31 months. Holy moly. Just wanted to thank you. I'll tell you, Mel, I'm proud of you, Shelly. Thank you so much. So with that. Gracias. If you guys could hit the like button too, please. Uh, again, this is an ongoing investigation. I will try to answer as many questions as I can possibly answer. Sheriff, you said before that Catherine was targeted in this. Have you established a connection between Catherine and Jordan and why you targeted her? The direct connection between Jordan and Catherine has not yet been established. I think that we have established a clear connection between Catherine's brother uh, and um, uh, Giovanni, mm. and we have not made the connection yet with Jordan as far as this. So to answer the question of why, if this is our shooter, why he would target her, I can't answer that question yet. Yes, that that those connections will largely be based on the evidence that we get back from phones and records and computer records and documents. But again, no further information on the connection with the tow truck driver uh, at this time with this. And what about Giovanni and Giovanni? No connection between them either? Uh, not Giovanni and who? Giovanni. No. Uh, at this time with this. Uh, not that we have right now. Does Jordan have any known gang or otherwise connections? Well, listen, he's, he's wanted for, for gun charges out of Puerto Rico, right? Mm -hmm. and, and I think that um, although there's not a whole lot documented other than that, uh, it's fair to say he's got a lot of connections that are probably illicit and illegal. But we'll get that record back. I mean, we didn't even know where he was until noon today. So now that we have him, it'll be based upon what he says in this interview. But he's a bad guy. There's no doubt about it. Do you have any idea how long they've been operating in Florida? Well, the only thing that we know for, for sure is, is the photograph in the face or the alias Facebook account was taken in January. There is some criminal history in uh, 2024 for a burglary. 
Uh, we're looking to see kind of where that was out of. I think it was out of Orange County where he has a connection there. So at least the past uh, four months here. But, but the in-depth breakdown of this, I, I don't know at this time because all of this is fresh information coming, coming out right now. So we know that the tow truck driver is connected with this group, right? We have the, the 10 millimeter casings. We have some evidence that was collected by the Orange County Sheriff's Office there. They're taking primary focus on that investigation. We, we know that the green Acura was seen at that location. So there is clearly a connection here. Uh, but, but the scope of this update has no new updates with the tow truck driver since the last time I provided an update, I think a week ago today. Or actually, on Monday is the last one. You mentioned Catherine's brother was doing some sort of, or whoever the relative was, uh, uh, doing some sort of uh, independent investigation. Uh, do you have, is there any understanding of what sort of resources he might have at his, at his, uh, at his disposal? So what, what it appears, uh, first of all, if, if your sister is gone missing or believed to be dead, and you're not working with the police on the investigation, oh. you're doing your own independent, they call that a clue, right? It, it is incredibly... Uh, uh, out of the ordinary behavior, but what we think, I don't think it's that out of the ordinary. Maybe to kind of look things up yourself. I mean, I communicate with the cops too, but uh, he was doing is tapping into her social media accounts, probably on a computer that Ooh. was sharing the same iCloud account, where Ooh. he could see any FaceTime calls or any communication she may have had. Uh, he looks at that, provides information on that, but screenshots a portion of the screen that shows an image of likely the last person who she spoke to, which is Giovanni. Mm. We forensically examine Lewis's phone after he gives it to us, and it's a larger picture oh. where he's actually engaged in a screen time conversation. Typically, they'll have the big picture who you're talking to, and in a small corner, there's a box where it can show he's talking to Giovanni. He says that Giovanni tells him that she was up here to deliver money and other stuff for a friend. And again, he's been cooperating. He's not a suspect in this crime, but his independent investigation initially did not involve police that we're aware of until we reached out, he contacted us, and we started having some of those conversations. Then he's been sharing information to the extent of what he's comfortable with. Have you been able to figure out how many times uh, Catherine has traveled from Homestead to the Central Florida area, you know, in the past few months? Was this some sort of drug meal situation? Are you able to tell us about uh, so that? So the question about the drug meal situation would be purely speculation on her involvement at this time. And we don't have any prior record of her ever being in Seminole County prior to being a victim of this crime. And I think that uh, a lot of those questions will be answered when we can obtain records from, from various phones and various devices to be able to see exactly uh, who she was calling, what the communication was, what those cameras on interstates uh, will, will tell us about the unique characteristics of the vehicle that she was driving in. So to answer your question, uh, as far as we know now, at this part of the investigation, we don't know of any other time that she's ever been in Seminole County other than this particular. That absolutely may change when we get evidence in. Obviously, they knew exactly who was in that car. This was a targeted yeah, event. Targeted for sure. How long yeah. they followed her, how they tracked her down is still something uh, that we're investigating right now. We don't know how far, how long, the methods that they would use, but, but with the success and the progress of this investigation, I'm sure we'll know those answers pr pretty quickly. But right now, at this point, we, we don't know. Chief, is there any update about the involvement of the Orange County deputy in this situation? The Orange County deputy situation, I, I, I think, is done from our perspective. We'll, we'll continue to look at his phone and computer to see if there's any pattern of doing this. But again, um, you know, we charged him. Uh, we think that the charges are appropriate. We, we know that he's out on bond right now, but there's been no new updates in that case since Monday when I briefed you last. Do you think the brother could become a target of whoever targeted his sister? And should he be seeking protection? 
Well, I, look, I, I don't want to anticipate who's going to be a target. I know that there's some bad players and bad actors that are doing incredibly dangerous things with this. Um, so, so I encourage anybody who feels like that they may be in harm's way uh, to come to us for some level of protection. Tell us what you know. Uh, contact Crimeline if you feel less comfortable coming to the police. So that's where we're at. So let me just kind of recap because I know people will come in halfway through this and some may not have heard the previous press conferences, but this is the third press conference. Investigate a follow-up. We know that, that when our victim, Catherine, was traveling uh, to Seminole County, she was on the phone uh, on, a, on a FaceTime type of call with a person now identified as Giovanni. Uh, Giovanni was identified through the use of technology to a faces imaging wow. software program that basically looks at every booking image that has occurred and compares it to that. It matched at a 96.8% to a 2019 booking photo at the Orange County Sheriff's Office. Uh, Giovanni lives at a location with his girlfriend, oh. Oh. Uh, Soto. In I thought they were going to say Mama. Okay, his girlfriend. Castleberry. We attained a search warrant after establishing probable cause, executed that search warrant, found trafficking amounts of fentanyl and one gun not believe related to this particular crime or the Orange County crime. At the same time that we were executing the search warrant, Soto accepted delivery with a controlled delivery from HSI after three kilos of cocaine was sent through the mail, sent to a location in Osceola County, and she went there and picked that up and was ultimately arrested for doing that. Damn. So this guy's girlfriend was arrested for doing that, picking up the kilos? They're there. We're asking for the public's help and assistance with locating uh, Giovanni. His name, his date of birth, and his photograph are on the screen uh, right wow. there. That's he wild. is on the run. We want to know where he's at, and we want to bring him into custody. So just pausing here real quick. I know it's a little confusing. I'm a little bloop, bloop, confused a little too. So we got these other people now in this story. Jordanish Torres Garcia. And this is the guy, as he said multiple times, he has a connection to purchasing this vehicle, uh, 2002 Acura, which is like very, apparently the green one is very rare in Florida. I, think, I thought he said there was like only three in that last press conference. So Garcia's phone number matched the phone number on the, of the person who bought the green Acura, 103 green in all of the state. An online social media profile picture proved the match 98% to an old arrest photo. And the clothing in his Facebook profile closely resembles the clothing of the suspect in the video of the carjacking, which is wild. Wild, okay? Phone number links to the car purchase. The profile picture on his Facebook. They were able to do like a matchup to the, when he, this alleged kidnap, well, whoever kidnapped him. It looks like him to me. And... He was also linked to a previous burglary report. Uh, trying to figure out a direct connection. Any direct uh, between Torres and the woman's not known yet. Okay. So I, I'm not sure. I, I don't know if he was the guy sent to go do the work. Because this other guy now, Giovanni Joel Crespo Hernandez. I don't know why the Spanish people got so many names in one. And, I, and I'm Spanish. Johnny, Tony, Conera, Conteres, Suntere, Tontura, Tara. It's fucking confusing. I can't imagine trying to search people in a database. And so Giovanni Joel Crespo Hernandez was also named as a person of interest and is wanted by the Seminole County Sheriff's Office. Sheriff Lemma said Crespo Hernandez has a home in Castleberry where he lives with his girlfriend. So now we got Catherine's brother. Catherine is. The victim, okay? This guy starts doing his own investigation after his sister was reportedly kidnapped. As part of the investigation, he took looked into her social media and iCloud. He was able to find the phone number to which his sister had a FaceTime with this guy, which is still kind of interesting to me because I, don't, I really wonder what was going on because she also supposedly was on the phone with her husband. But anyway, she's talking to this guy on FaceTime. 
he was able to track the phone number. He took a screenshot and provided that screenshot to the um, sheriff's office. And that belonged to Crespo Hernandez. During their call, Crespo Hernandez reportedly told the woman's brother that she was going in town to give money and other stuff. Sheriff said that while initially it was belie not believed that the woman had family in Central Florida, there may be some relatives. However, neither of them were expecting them. They conducted a warrant of the home and found fentanyl, guns, both unrelated to the carjacking. And then coincidentally, this guy's um, girlfriend, Crespo Hernandez, whatever, blah, 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 was arrested because they she was went to go pick up three kilos of cocaine through USPS. <laughs> you can't make this up. Now, I had thought the other thing, too, that the sheriff was saying, I was trying to listen. I thought the sheriff had said, too, that the brother had sent part of the thing, but not all of it. Did he say something like that? Not the whole conversation. So I, I, I thought, I, I don't know. I'd, I'd have to listen to it again. The other thing, I just want to show you this. This was the cop that was arrested. The cop that was siphoning information to the family. Lied to uh Estrella Chichon. Chicon. County deputy walked out of jail. He's connected to the deadly carjacking that happened one week ago in Winter Springs. Thanks for joining oh. us. I'm John. Yeah, they all up in his face, too. Star, star, excuse Brown. me. And I'm Luann Sorrell. This is new video just into our newsroom. <laughs> Today, a Seminole County judge granted him bond. Let's get out to Fox 3. Amazing. Patrick Perez, he is live outside the jail tonight. So, Patrick, did the deputy say anything when he walked out? Luann, Deputy Francisco Estrella said nothing. He answered no questions. I asked him why he did it and what this could do for his career, but heard no response. Instead, he walked straight into his car. This all happened right around 9.30, so about 30 minutes ago. I want to walk you now through the facts of this case and why this deputy is facing multiple charges. Seminole County detectives allege that Estrella accessed a law enforcement database to provide the husband of Catherine Aguas Vivas information before he was set to be interviewed by detectives working the homicide and carjacking case. He's also accused of recording a conversation between himself and the detective working that case while pretending to be a detective using a different last name and then sharing that recording with Aguas Viva's husband. Detectives believe Estrella was trying to obstruct the investigation, but his attorney, Corey Cohen, told me that his client was only trying to help Aguas Viva's family, although he claims he barely knew them. Cohen says Estrella met them this January for the first time following a funeral for Aguas Viva's husband's father in South Florida. And that same man is Estrella's wife's stepfather. Cohen says Estrella admits he made a mistake. Well, my client was honest with the cops when he was interviewed. He did tell them he went on um, David. He was, on, he was not authorized to look up certain information, uh, but he did it in the effort to try to help. He has no other connection to this family. He doesn't know them. He doesn't know what activities they were partaking in that led to this do. going one out of his way Estrella now has to wear a GPS monitoring device as part of his release that's the latest outside of the Seminole County Jail tonight I'm Patrick Perez Fox 35 News thanks Patrick we also have new details tonight about that carjacking a witness telling Fox 35 the deputies that it appeared that the white SUV that Catherine Aguas Vivas was in was trying to get away from that now infamous green Acura that was following her she was kidnapped at gunpoint a week ago her SUV was later found burned in Osceola County and her body is believed to have been inside. Investigators have not officially confirmed if it was her that was inside that burned out vehicle, though. Damn. Crazy, crazy. On the car side, the car was sold uh, and never properly uh, uh, licensed with a license plate at a buy here, pay here dealership. A person who does not speak English walks in. He's with another person who is better with English, and they communicate the sale. He identifies himself during that encounter uh, and leading up to that encounter with a Facebook profile that has an image of him appearing to wear the exact same thing that was seen on the video that was captured of the, of the kidnapping 
that we've witnessed time. Why do you do this? What about your career? Why do you do this? Your career? Do you feel like you've been doing your career? Is there anything you want to tell us at all at this point? Did you just want to help? What's the video? That's more video playing. Time and time again. Exact same clothing. His name that he's used is Jordan Latroy. He gives a phone number. The phone number matches a database back in Orange County in a burglary case, and the phone number comes back to a legitimate name, Jordanish Torres Garcia. And even the alias has some version of his legitimate name uh, in that. He was arrested today afternoon on a federal federal violation of probation warrant for for a gun charge not for this case we're listing him as a person of interest a strong as strong as you can get as a person of interest and i'm sure that as evidence comes in we will update what his status is and what we're actually calling him so that's the that's the update uh, for today I want to again uh, thank our partners, uh, both with the media, the local, state, and federal, and specifically uh, thank the detectives of the Seminole County Sheriff's Office who quite literally have been working this nonstop. Sometimes we say that, it's a little embellished. They have been taking turns sleeping so they can work this case both day and night. And I think that when you look at the progress here and you compare it to progress that may have occurred with something uh, across the country, and consider that really evidence of phones and all of this hasn't even come back yet. It's nothing short of, of something to be proud of. But this is something that our entire community is, is, is frightened by. And, and I want everyone to know how important this is to us to make sure that these people are held accountable to the fullest extent of the law. So with that, any other questions? Catherine's social media, her iCloud account, I mean, you could be deleting things when you're accessing this stuff. Is there a concern there? Uh, so no concern about tampering with evidence. The, the way it works is uh, we have forensic examiners where people who think that they can erase that, you just don't erase it, right? We've got wonderful technology. Uh, uh, anybody who's an expert in this field knows that we, we have uh, the ability to kind of piece things back together. So we feel incredibly comfortable with, with the evidence that we will be able, be able to collect as it comes in. But at the same time, we still want to encourage people who know, look, these people are living lives, right? People who know about these individuals, who have seen things, who know things, we want them to step forward and provide whatever information they can. And there, was, there was one more person uh, in, in the carjacking case, right? There was uh, potentially Jordan, the one in the sweater, and then somebody, a second suspect. Can you tell us any, anything more about that person? I, I, I wish I could tell you more about the other person that was inside the car that was driving. Yeah that car we just don't know at this time uh, that's going to kind of come together but again this is why we want the public to say look we've a we think that we've identified probably the guy that got out uh, but the guy that's inside the car we want any information about that as well so you're, you're looking for the unidentified suspect in geo right now correct the incident report mentioned a witness who saw someone in the actor wait in a friendly way according to the incident report to Catherine before the actor started following Based on that, do investigators believe that she knew the carjackers and she had a previous relationship? I don't have that information. I haven't seen that information, and, and I don't know if she actually knew him or not. Uh, I doubt that they would wear a mask and do this and just, like, wave at him. Not wearing a mask doesn't make much sense, right? So I would have to kind of look at that, but I don't know if, if she knew them or not. But I do believe that as a part of this investigation, we'll find out if she actually had dealings with them or knew them. It, it, it's quite possible, right? I just don't know at this time. And at this point, the husband is no longer a person of interest. We remain on the same. Well, I never put him as a person of interest. Uh, you know, I've said he's, he and her brother, uh, Lewis, are cooperating. But I'm incredibly skeptical of their level of cooperation, Ooh. right? But I'm, I'm still uh, identifying that. Ooh. 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 Person of interest, we remain on the same.
Well, I never put him as a person of interest. Uh, you know, I've said he's he and her brother, uh, Lewis, are cooperating, but I'm incredibly skeptical of their level of cooperation. Right. But I'm, I'm still uh, identifying them as as witnesses and people who are working with us. They've never been listed as a person of interest. They've never been listed as a suspect. Uh, but but I but I think that the court of, po uh, of popular opinion has has come to their own conclusions about what they know, what they don't know, and what their involvement is. But as far as the investigation goes, I have not not identified them as a person of interest or suspect in this case. Would you say Jordanish didn't speak any English? You know where he's from? Uh, he is from Jordan. Is from uh, Puerto Rico, we believe. Uh, we know that his his crimes were in Puerto Rico. Uh, we know that he had uh, connections back there, but where he was born, uh, I, I'm not sure of right now. Likely uh, Puerto Rico, but I, I, I don't know. Can we get Soto's full name as well? Uh, yes. Um, we're going to re release it in the media pack. I'd be happy to, to prepare that. Breezy. Look at Evil as fuck. Look at that. Oh. So he's on the run. Giovanni. Wow. What an update. So it's looking skeezy. Skeezerous. Drugs. Money. Dark connection. Sus. Cops involved. Cop arrested. What the hell? All right, man. So what we're about to do, guys, we're about to go to the second channel because we got to cover this guy that lit his ass on fire because he wanted to make a point. A, a, I don't know if it's a, a I don't can't say political because he believes they're both in on it, but some government point and wild conspiracy theorists. I wouldn't be surprised the guy had a following and people just they follow these type of people walk off a bridge or off a building. This guy lit himself on fire to make a point and to bring attention and awareness. Now, last I'm seeing, this was how long was this? This was uh, know, hours ago, actually. Hours ago, I'd have to check again for an update. They said he was still alive but in critical condition. I saw him moving on the stretcher. He, he looked bad. He, he looked pretty bad on that stretcher. He looked crisp. Um, it's probably because of the fire extinguisher but we're going to talk about it more anthony said he was a liberal right i don't i don't know what he was honestly he didn't like biden he didn't like trump i don't i don't know what his political you know it's just like anti um government conspiracy cryptocurrency it's all coming to an end so we'll pull up some videos and some articles. And there's a press conference. We're going to watch the press conference, too. No, it is Mike going in and out. You can't hear me? Oh. You can't hear me. Oh, oh did I touch the knob? Maybe I touched the knob. Hold on. Oh, I hit the knob. My bad. Don't touch the buttons. Can you hear me? Tomorrow's the fight, by the way. Tomorrow, Garcia. Okay. De Devin Haney versus Ryan Garcia. 8 o'clock p.m., baby. Eastern. It's going to be well. Oh, there might be a chase. There might be a chase. Motherfucker, we've been waiting. You motherfuckers been taking forever. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let me change. Uh, hold on. Let me make a live stream on the second channel. We'll have to push back the other stream. The guy that burned himself alive. But the guy that burned himself alive is going to have to wait a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I know, brother. Sometimes we got to hold each other. 
Make sure y'all subscribe. KTLA overhead. Come on. Okay, they're not there yet. So let me just set up the stream. I'm going to burn myself to make a point. A police officer in Connecticut, he had to launch a slow speed chase of a runaway horse this week. The officer had his lights flashing, but the animal ignored the pursuit and continued to trot on down. The oh, oh, baby, don't kick rocks. Where's the chase? Can you guys hear me better? Let's go. All right, I think I'm going to transfer everybody over because I got to switch accounts. Drop and give me 50. Drop and give me 50. Drop and give me 50. Media at Chase. When they go on live. <laughs> 